my pronouns are she, they. And I'm going to go back to a worldwide end of March memory that I have uh, before I go into my story. Um, in 2016, I would have my very my first lung collapse, which um, I would later find out was due to having thoracic endometriosis. And I was just a year into finding out that I had endometriosis and trying to learn more about it in general. So to find out that, oh, wow, that this disease can spread throughout your body, it was very alarming and very, um, it was very, I was just in a really dark place when a when I saw the Worldwide Endo March uh, online, um, a, per a person I was seeing at the time was like, hey, you should check this out. They're coming to DC. And I'm like, okay, and anyone else just going through whatever this is? And that's what I called it at the time because no one else I knew was going through this. I had never even heard of endometriosis before all of this had happened with me. And I, I met one or two people at the time at that specific event that I'm still close to and they're still dear to me to this day. So definitely Worldwide Endo March um, has, has been the springboard which would lead to all of the endometriosis advocacy that I'm currently involved with. But although in this, and like I said, endometri um, the Worldwide Endo March as on their 10th anniversary. And although it served as a, what I would say as a springboard, it was still missing gaps to other community um, endometriosis groups that I would find where I didn't find other people like me at the time. I, I do identify as a, a masculine identified woman. I'm a uh, you know, I'm just a, I'm just, what do I like to say? I'm a butch lesbian, but I still didn't see anyone at the time that represented me or anyone that looked like me. It was more of just cis, um, cisgendered and cis presenting women. And later in this, I would go to the doctor for this. And my current partner, many of you have seen, she's, and she, she's um, definitely the feminine one, the feminine appearing one. So a lot of times when we go to um, my appointments together, a lot of people thought she needed the help and people just couldn't relate someone with my appearance dealing with a, a illness that's still very related to the feminine. And then after, you know, trying to connect with some endometriosis groups and it, and I even had one group um, where they would, they told me, yeah, we didn't contact you anymore because the ladies were un uncomfortable with you in the group. And so after that, I just, I didn't, and as I mentioned, I didn't know any other groups, any other, you know, I didn't know any other queer people experiencing this. So that's what led me to forming um, the group now that many of you know me from Indoqueer. And Indoqueer is a LGBTQ IA plus um, support space and network for those going in the community that's going through endometriosis and other similar illnesses. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I would have several lung collapses since that 2016 moment. My latest um, surgery for it was in was actually this past November of 2022. And so to make a long story short, I um I just challenge everyone, not just our representatives, because although they are, they're the ones that enforce the laws, they, they make sure that these laws happen for us. I want to make sure that the communities, um, like people that us in the community interact with on a daily basis, are checking their implicit bias and other biases that they have toward the community. Because as, as many statistics and studies show, it's still hard for LGBTQIA plus individuals to receive the health care they need, to receive the money they need. So a lot of times, I'm very thankful where at this point in my life, I am dealing with these challenges and next steps, which hopefully um, I, I find more relief from uh, eventually, but I'm blessed that now I do have insurance to deal with, but I've been, I've dealt with endometriosis with no insurance. I've dealt with this with very little insurance. So I've dealt with this with, uh, I've dealt with the point where I, I would get like repeatedly misgendered, even after my partner would tell them, no, these are her pronouns. And people were just becoming, excuse my language, very, they were assholes about it. So I just, and then it, and then it always helps when you can have some kind of support space. Like, even if, 
you don't have people offline, no supportive family or a good network, at least try to find a few people that can be there for you because it always starts with good friends and people that you can confide in and people that will show support. I know for, um, I went through a journey with, endo, uh, with um, you know, with becoming more vulnerable with this, with telling people more what I'm going through and, and just reaching out more. And just at this time in my life, finding people that have been there and the support that was there for myself and my partner, especially with this last surgery was something that I was very thankful for. But I wanna make sure that everyone from not just our, um, our uh, government officials and our medical professionals, but also just people on the ground every day, whether it's colleagues or whether it's, um, whether it's neighbors, whether it's uh, friends, whatever it is, make sure you're treating the LGBTQIA plus people in your personal lives that you see every day decent. Because of course, we still have high suicide rates in the community. We still have very low income to little income in our community. A lot of people in the community have to resort to doing illegal things for money because unfortunately, this is still a very prejudiced and biased society um, toward the LGBTQIA plus community. And so a lot of people don't have the jobs in the community that would provide them with the with the good insurance to even consider the excisions and consider um, and to be able to have better um, health care. So I so it's definitely a responsibility for everyone to be better, um, to be better, to treat the LGBTQIA plus uh, community better. Cause of course uh, a, a queer person could have the best doctor in the world, but if they're coming home to an abusive family, uh, no friends, no type of support, that's just as bad for them menta mentally as the physical issue, physical illnesses that endometriosis and other similar illnesses bring. So I just want to challenge everyone um, from government officials, from all levels of healthcare professionals, to neighbors, to friends, to colleagues, to just everyone across the board to treat LGBTQIA plus people better and believe uh, believe us when we mention our challenges and also to know and as I've mentioned um, with um, with several panels and several organizations that I've collaborated with endometriosis does go beyond womanhood it goes beyond just cisgendered straight uh, women it goes beyond womanhood and endometriosis represents humanity and we all have to do our part.